In this video, I'll be transforming this wood into this bench. I'll be using this board of cherry, which has a big bend in it, but luckily the bend is in the perfect spot where I'll be able to get the full bench top out of this board. Close call. I'm gonna go ahead and admit it. I've been racked by the vice handle many times and I don't even know when the last time it was that happened because I don't care if you're a slow learner or what, you get clipped in the nads a couple times, you learn to stand a little further back. To get a good color or grain match, it can sometimes help to think about rolling over the edge right where the board was cut. First I thought about rolling over this direction, but it had this band of sapwood that I just, it would have been fine, but not really what I wanted for this piece. So I decided to try going around the other way, and uh, that's what I decided to go with. I think it was going to end up looking better for this piece. People have asked me why I cut my boards in the vise instead of hanging over the bench. Well, sometimes I do. And next, in the most boring part of all woodworking, I pass the wood over expensive machines to get it nice and square. This is why I do not make cutting boards. As I'm getting ready to glue up the top, I'm kind of looking at it on the underside, there's an area that's damaged. I wasn't able to plane that damage out of it because it would make it too thin. So I've got the choice of either filling that with epoxy, keeping it in the center, or if it's gonna be on the edge, trying to trim that part off, which is what I end up trying to do. A little bit of tape on the bars of the clamp will make sure that no glue gets stuck to it. One of the things I love about parallel clamps is they save a lot of space when you're waiting for your glue up to dry because you can stack it up vertically like that. Next I'll be gluing up the legs and the joint line is not straight, it's, the edge is slightly rounded because when I squeeze on one end it opens up on the other end. 
And you can do something called a spring joint where you actually plane off more in the center than on the edges. That's going to create a slight hollow on that joint line. You can do the hollow on both edges or just on one, it doesn't really matter. But when you push the edges together, they will have a slight gap right in the center and then nice and tight on the two ends. That way you could, if you wanted to, just use a single clamp right in the center and you'd have a nice tight joint all the way across the edge. This ended up being a little bit more gap than I wanted, so I put one of the boards back in the vise and just planed it. And if you listen here, you'll hear that it only the plane only takes wood off on the edges. It doesn't really take anything off the middle. I'm going to get both the sides or the legs out of this board, so I need to cut it in half. Next, I'll square up one end and then cut it down to final length and square the other end. Once the legs are matched up to exactly the same length, I go ahead and clean them up with a hand plane. If you've been around this channel for a minute, then you may notice that I'm not using the bench dogs I made a little while back that I thought were so cool. Turns out my dog holes are not perpendicular to the bench top. They're not perfectly straight, so the head of that new bench dog was not sitting flush. Didn't really affect the function, but for some reason it was just annoying to me, so I don't use that anymore. And unfortunately there was some damage, crack or something on the inside face of one of these legs. So I'll go ahead and tape around that and then plane up all the other pieces and, and fill up any damage that needs to be filled with epoxy.
The underside of the top also had a few sections that needed to be filled with epoxy, so I taped around them, put some epoxy in there, and after that dried, I just planed them down with a block plane. Next, I take the side pieces of the legs, start marking out and cutting the tenons. If you are not new to the channel, then you'll know this is not the way I typically, I usually will cut the mortises and then mark out and cut the tenons based on the mortises. I'm doing it the other way around today. Just wanted to try something different. So let's see how it works out. I mark the baseline by taking a marking gauge and making it a little thicker than the top. By having the baseline a little bit deeper than the thickness of the top, those tenons will stick out. They'll protrude a little bit from the top and I'll be able to plane them flush at the end. Before marking out the mortise locations on the top, I get a nice straight edge to reference off of and I go ahead and get this thing cut down to final length and trim up the edges nice and straight on the shooting board. Usually the way I've done something like this is I'll cut the mortises, then mark the tenons and cut them. Today I'm doing it the other way around. I'm marking the mortises directly off of the tenons. <sighs> 
On the underside, I take a chisel and chop about halfway through. I'm gonna use a slightly different technique on the other side, on the top side. You'll see that in a minute. First thing I do on the top, which is going to be the show side, is I deepen the long grain section of those tenons because that's, that area is really prone to tearing out. If you don't do that first, you can bet your bottom dollar you're going to be wedging those tenons, but not to make the joint any stronger, just to fill up the gap. Then I just work it down sort of like I would for a dado. And I finish up by just paring down on that long grain section. This is pretty much a surefire way to get a very clean mortise. But the real question is, will the tenons fit? Next, I'm gonna work on the cross rail. I'll plane a straight edge and then cut a very simple tenon. I use the cross rail and tenon piece to lay out the dimensions for the mortise. The key to a good joint here is to cut the mortise inside the lines and then pare down the tenon and or the mortise to fit afterwards. Here I'm checking the fit of the tenon. The width is good because the corners are going in. The length is a little bit long. It's a lot easier to plane some of the length off of the tenon than it is to chisel down the end grain of the mortise. As I get closer to fitting this thing, I just mark areas that need to be trimmed off and taking a chisel, just remove those pencil lines.
Next, I take the two side pieces, put them together, and go ahead and mark out for the shape of the bottom. Good enough for government work. There's always a bunch of scratches, dents and dings and things like that, so before I glue up I take all the pieces and plane them off. On the side piece, I make sure I don't plane on those tenons. If I did plane the tenons, they're already fit, so it would end up with a gap. And then I just glue this sucker up with some hide glue. On my plans, there's actually two shoulders on that tenon. I don't know if I forgot or just didn't feel like it, but there's just one on this one. After the glue's dried, I plane off any of the protruding tenons. We'll give it the old finger lick test and I think we can take that. Next I go around and chamfer all the edges, especially the feet. The feet have to have a good chamfer on them so that when it's scooting around on the ground, none of the wood breaks out. sand everything down really well and then I put on a finish. There's a couple keys to getting a really good finish and the first of course is just really good surface prep, especially on the end grain it needs to be sanded very thoroughly. I'm using an oil based finish here, the tried and true varnish oil. I get a ton of questions in this area so I'm going to try to take a little extra time in this video, explain exactly what I do. And the thing about oil based finishes is that they're really easy to apply but on the other hand they're actually surprisingly difficult to get a really high quality end result finish with and most of that in my opinion has to do with the surface prep uh, so that it doesn't get dull or get dull spots. The wood needs to be practically burnished, the end grain I sand through a typical progression and even the face grain that's been hand planed I usually sand that with 320 grit unless it's like totally fully straight grained wood with no grain run out. I wipe on the finish let it soak in about an hour then I come back in, in an hour and wipe it off completely. The next day I take a shop rag and rub it very thoroughly. Here you can see me doing this to make sure it comes back completely clean. If it doesn't, then I'll repeat this for maybe two days or three days. At that point I just let the finish cure for several days to a week. The end result should be kind of a satinish finish when you look at it from a low angle as you can see here. Sometimes for wear surfaces like the top of this bench or for shelves on a bookcase, I'll also apply some paste wax. This is how we do it boys and girls, making projects, knocking them out, doing this all the time. If you like it, then subscribe. I got a bunch of sweet stuff coming down the pipeline.